So, so far we've looked at a couple of different ways that writers organize their thoughts. One way is compare and contrast, and we looked at how um, that writing could be organized point by point or subject by subject. And then we also saw time order and list order. Today we're going to discuss cause and effect. Now in a cause and effect paragraph or essay explains why something happened or the results of something. And there are two ways that writers typically organize a cause and effect paragraph. The first way is that there's one single cause and it's very many effects. The other way is that they list the single effect and its many causes. Now, writers typically don't list a number of effects and a number of causes because at that point you can't really tell what directly caused one thing or what directly was the result of something. So again, it's one single cause and it's many effects or one single effect and it's many causes. So we're going to look at some examples of this. Um, and just like any organizational pattern, there are specific signal words that go ahead and signal major details that the writer has brought up. And this is a great list. You might want to pause the video here, jot these down so you have them ready as we work through the rest of the exercises. So one way that it can be organized is one cause and its many effects, which we can see by this particular graphic here. So if we are reading a, an essay or a paragraph about juvenile obesity, um, we might divide that up into long-term health effects and the short-term health effects. And underneath long-term health effects would be stroke, cardiovascular disease, and hypertension. While under short-term health effects, we have sleep apnea, early puberty, high cholesterol, and type 2 diabetes. So let's go ahead and look at an example of one cause and many effects. Since my daughter has been in daycare, she has become better at a few different things. It's just to start off, her vocabulary is much larger and much more developed. Before she started daycare, my daughter had a few select words that she would say, like mama, dada, coco, one of the puppies, and some other simple words. Now she tries to repeat everything that is said. Another result of her being in daycare is that she has the ability to interact with other children better. In the past, she was only around one child. Now she is around about six to eight kids, and she has learned to share her toys and to play in a group with the older children. Her learning to share is carried over at home when she tells her daddy or me that it's his turn or mommy's turn when putting her socks on. A third outcome of her being in daycare is the fact that she is becoming more self-reliant. Before daycare, she wouldn't try very hard to help me with getting dressed, but now she wants to try to do it all on her own. She puts her pull-ups on and tries to pull on her shoes and pants herself. Socks still go on upside down, but at least her shoes go on the correct feet. I'm really glad that I decided to put her in a daycare for the benefits have been great. So the first thing that we want to do is identify the signal words. Again, you might want to look at the list that was in the beginning of this video. In this particular case, we have to start off, another result, and a third. So remember, we want to go ahead and use those signal words to point out the major details. In this case, we have three major details. The first is her vocabulary is much larger and more developed. She has the ability to interact with other children better. And the last one is she is becoming more self-reliant. And you can see these in the green in the paragraph. And then we can use the supporting details to figure out what our main idea is. In this case, our main idea is she has become better at a few different things. So the cause is that she's been in daycare. And then the effects are her vocabulary is much larger she works with other children better, and she's more self-reliant. Okay, the other type of organization we'll see in a cause and effect is one single effect and its many causes. So if we have a similar topic, juvenile obesity, but instead of being the cause, it's the effect in this particular thing. Um, we can look at the causes. So uh, one cause might be the high cost and accessibility of healthful foods, and another cause might be the decreased physical activity. And then we have some minor details under there that fast food is more affordable than produce and many urban areas lack nearby grocery stores, as well as um, budget cuts affect schools' ability to provide gym classes and increased emphasis on standardized testing has decreased 
recess time. So that's the other way that one can go ahead and organize a cause and effect um, paragraph. So let's practice one more time and look at an example of one effect and many causes. Many people believe that the act of courage lies within each individual, and these acts of courage can be brought out by three possible causes. The first cause, and the most obvious, is provocation. Oftentimes, this is seen in movies where the villain kidnaps and threatens to kill the hero's family. More often than not, the hero finds it within himself to put aside his fears and overcome near-impossible odds to save the day. The majority of the time, it is direct threats, such as this one that provoked human nature to act of courage. The second cause is a purpose. In 2001, the Twin Towers fell to terrorist attacks. Military enlistments reached all-time highs as many men and women joined the armed forces. For many of these people, the prospect of serving their country and getting revenge for the cowardice acts of the terrorists were the only reasons necessary for their courage. The third cause is a belief in a higher power. The presence of God gives many people the courage to do things they would not be able to do otherwise. His words play clearly in their mind. Be strong and of good courage, because the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Biblical reference. According to God and his followers, his presence is enough cause for courage. For these people, their courage knows no boundaries. Whatever your inspiration for courage may be, you can just about bet it is brought on by one of these three underlying circumstances. So again, just like in the paragraph of one cause, many effects, we want to go ahead and look at the different signal words, which are indicated here in yellow. So we have the first cause, the second cause, and the third cause. And then we want to go ahead and use these signal words to figure out what our major details are. Okay, and they're pointed out in the green text here. So um, the first major detail is that the first cause is provocation. The next one is the second cause is purpose. And the last one is that the third cause is a belief in a higher power. Then we go ahead and take all those major details and we see what, um, what particular effect they're pointing to. So we know we have a number of causes. So if we see a number of causes, we're looking for just one effect. So in this particular instance, the effect is shown um, in blue, and it's our main idea. And it's many people believe that the acts of courage lie within each individual, and these acts of courage can be brought out by three possible causes. So hopefully this makes sense to you, and you can move on to the activity in D2L.